Hi everyone, I'm Mark. Welcome to Gadgets with Gurman, our new Bloomberg consumer technology show about new consumer tech products. This week, as you can see, we're going to be talking about retro phones. While all the hype right now is about the new Samsung Galaxy S8, some of the phones coming from other big phone makers like the Apple iPhone 8 or whatever they choose to call it later in the fall. But 2017 has really kicked off a trend of some retro looking phones. We have three of them today. The new BlackBerry T1, the return of the Nokia 3310 candy bar phone, as well as the new Gresso Meridian. So let's zoom in and take a look at them. So let me show you first the new BlackBerry T1 phone here. And you can see it has a full physical QWERTY keyboard for BlackBerry diehards, and it has this 4.5 inch touchscreen. We also have the new Nokia 3310 phone. This is a comeback version of the original from over a decade ago. I remember taking it from people to play Snake on there, and we'll show you the new version of Snake. And the benefit here is that it's in color. So you have a full color screen now. It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good in sunlight. Uh, so we'll, we'll dive into that a little bit later. And then we have the Gresso Meridian phone. Now this phone is something special. It's not your run-of-the-mill phone. These are handmade, high-end phones. This particular model costs north of $3,000. It's made out of stainless steel, titanium, uh, and other expensive materials. It has black ceramic on the back. In terms of the actual specifications of the phone, the battery life, uh, it's not that great. It really isn't a very capable phone, but only a thousand of each models are made. So for example, this one, this was the, the 12th one made, and it's engraved here at the bottom. It says 12 out of 999. It's actually interesting. So if you're the type of person who wants a phone that literally no one else really has, this is the phone for you. But if you want something capable, you're going to want to look elsewhere. So let's, uh, you know, let's jump in back to the Nokia phone and, and the BlackBerry phone, the two phones that we're going to focus on today. So this Nokia phone, well, who should get this one? For $50 or 50 euros, you can order it in, in euros right now uh, or when it comes out in June from the UK Nokia website. It's a cool secondary phone. It's a cool gift. If you know someone really nostalgic for that old Nokia phone, they love playing Snake on it, this could be for them. But it's also appealing to business users, and we'll, we'll dive into that. But it's also the same story with the new BlackBerry T1 phone. This is not your iPhone or, or you know run-of-the-mill Android phone, Samsung phone, Google Pixel phone. It's half touchscreen, half physical keyboard. So if you really want the physical keyboard, that full typing, typing experience, you're going to really like this. If you're coming from an iPhone or a Pixel phone with a full touchscreen keyboard, as I have been using before I started using this for the show a few days ago, it's kind of difficult to transfer from a full touchscreen to the physical keyboard. I became really used to the touchscreen, so I don't love it. But if you're on a BlackBerry Bold or a really old physical keyboard phone, and you're sticking to it instead of getting a Samsung or Google Pixel or an iPhone because you're addicted to that keyboard, this takes you into the future sort of because it has a modern Android OS and some pretty good specs. Also, the battery life is pretty good. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, the design of the Nokia phone. And then please, if you can send in your questions, we're, we're live on Twitter and Facebook, and send your questions in, we'll answer them along the show. Anything about these phones, anything about the Samsungs, the Google phones, the, the iPhone 8, whatever you want to talk about. So this is the Nokia phone right here, as we showed earlier. Now it comes in four colors. This is the dark blue color, and there's also colors in yellow. There's this red orange, sort of a bright orange, you know, speed racing red, and then there's a gray phone as well. But I do want to show you something uh, really fun, and we're going to zoom into the screen here for this one. And if you look on the screen, we have Snake. So you can see Snake in right there, and you can actually play the full in Snake. So you can see the game here, and it's actually really fun. You know, it's just like your normal Snake game. And you know, it's just you know your simple game, your left and right controls. I wasn't really good at it when I played this for the first time in about 10 years the other day, but it's uh, I'm getting pretty good at it, I have to say, or maybe not because we're live. But, um, you know, it's a good nostalgic device to have there. And I think we have some questions coming in here. So why is that one phone so expensive? What kind of features does it have? So let me just shut this game here. Uh, so what that question is referring to is the Gresso phone that we have here. Why is it so expensive? Well, one, it's really expensive because of the materials. The buttons are made out of stainless steel, and this phone is advertised as being somewhat indestructible, so it's going to be really difficult to break if you drop it or throw it or, or whatnot. 
Uh, you're going to have a hard time breaking it. The screen seems really uh, scratch resistant. It does pick up fingerprints actually fairly easy, especially the metal as well, uh, surprisingly so. But it's expensive because of how difficult it is to break and the materials and the handmade craftsmanship, so they say, and, and all of that, and because of the fact that there's under a 1,000 of each model made. Is it really worth that money? Should you really spend that much, much money on a smartphone? Absolutely not. You can get an iPhone for one-tenth of the price of this phone, and the iPhone, Samsung phone, the same situation, the Google Pixel phone, they're all far more capable. This is just for the person who wants something that no one else has. Another question here, does the Nokia phone have a camera? That's a great question. Yes, it does have a camera. And obviously the original ones back in the 1990s didn't have cameras. This one has a camera, taking a few pictures on it. They don't look amazing. It's not a smartphone camera. It's just there if you need it for a quick picture. You're not going to be doing any artwork with this. You've seen the campaigns from the different phone makers shooting slow motion videos, 4K videos. No, this is a $50 off the shelf phone with the basic of the basic in terms of camera technology. No front facing camera, just the little small one here on the back. And there is a small, not super powerful flash right there too. Are these a threat to the iPhone? Absolutely not. The Nokia phone and the Gresso phone, as you can see right here, these are definitely not threats to the iPhone. These are novelty phones, but on different ends of the spectrum. One is a novelty phone if you just want an extra phone, and we'll get into the business use cases for that in a minute. But if you just want an extra phone, want to buy it as a fun gift for someone nostalgic for the original phones, you want to play Snake all day on this little device, fine. This is if you have all the money in the world. This BlackBerry phone, in some ways, it is an iPhone competitor. It runs Android. It's a smartphone. It has a lot of the latest technologies. Has a decent but not great camera. The Google Pixel camera, the Samsung S8 camera, and the iPhone 7 cameras are far superior uh, in my quick tests. But it is a smartphone in the end. It is a touchscreen. And actually, let me show you something cool. So the fingerprint scanner on this thing is in the space bar. I actually thought that was a fun little trick. I was a little surprised when I saw that for the first time. It's actually very fast, uh, nearly as fast as the iPhone Touch ID fingerprint scanner. And that's another good point. There is a really big caveat with this new Nokia phone, right? It doesn't work in the US. It doesn't connect to US cellular networks. So if you're the business user and you're traveling and you want a secondary phone or a burner phone or anything like that for this low $50 price comparatively to more, uh, more high-end smartphones, you know, you can throw this in your bag and use it when you land in Europe or use it when you land in Asia because it's compatible with those networks. The reason it's not compatible is because it uses 2G. Now, for those unfamiliar, 2G has been known as Edge. That's the original cellular and data network from the original iPhone from all the way back in 2007. And if you remember, it was a really big deal in 2008 when Apple announced the iPhone 3G. So in terms of the technologies for the bands that we're talking about in this phone, we're talking about 2007 original iPhone era technology here. So it's not compatible with the more up-to-date 3G, 4G, and soon to be 5G networks across the United States uh, at this point in other parts of the world. Another good question here, when does the new BlackBerry come out? This is going to come out later this year. It's going to be sold unlocked. BlackBerry hasn't gotten too specific on the, on the carrier partnerships or the actual release date, but it's going to be $550 unlocked, and you can pretty much put it on any compatible uh, GSM carrier. Who are these phones targeting? Is there a market for these types of phones? Well, that's a, that's a really good point, and let's just jump into that because I really think there's big benefits here for the business users on this spectrum. So, Business people, they like to talk a lot. They like to talk all the time, and they travel a ton, right? These two phones, the Nokia and the new BlackBerry, they get a ton of battery life. 22 hours on the Nokia and several hours on the BlackBerry phone in terms of talk time for both. So if, let's say you have an iPhone or a Samsung or a Google Pixel, and you want this as your secondary backup phone for traveling. Well, you can, uh, you can use your smartphone on the plane or whatnot. You can drain the battery. But when you land, you have this Nokia phone that you know is going to give you almost a day of talk time for battery life. So you can take calls as needed. It could also be used by some people as an emergency phone uh, when they're out of the United States. Now, a, co a cool point on that also for business users, there's a lot of people who travel between countries. So you might have someone traveling between Asia and Europe or Australia and you know, the UK in Europe. So that's very important to have two SIM cards, right? because there's roaming charges. You can have one SIM card, and I know firsthand, like I used a SIM card in a phone, went abroad, and got lots of data charges because I was roaming. But if my phone had two SIM card slots, I could have my US SIM in there, and then I could have my international SIM card in there to pick up on my carrier plan in that country. So both this Nokia phone and the Gresso phone has two SIM card slots. 
Now, all graph cell phone models have the dual SIM card slot set up, and I'll actually show you that because it's actually pretty cool. It's sort of like winged openings here, so you can open the SIM card slot on this side, and then you can open it on this side. It actually looks, it kind of reminds me of the Tesla Model X with the doors opening, right, on both sides. So you want to make sure you close these or else you're going to do serious damage in your pocket. But two SIM card slots on there. You pop off the back of the Nokia phone, two SIM cards in there. Some models don't have it, so you want to make sure you're going to get the dual SIM model if you need it. And so basically, you know, you can have your UK SIM card, and then you can have your Australia SIM card in there, and you can transfer between the two instantly uh, in order to, you know, make the most of your carry plans in each country. Another question coming in here. How is the quality? Is the technology inside reliable? Well, on all three phones, the quality differs, right? So the best quality phone, obviously, in terms of, the handmade craftsmanship and the materials used is probably this Gresso phone, and that's really what you're paying for with this $3,500 starting price point for this particular model. The exterior of the Nokia phone is, you know, plastic. It's a $50 phone. This thing is not going to survive lots of breaks and drops and scratches. In fact, just by using it very little, the screen is a little bit scratched up. The BlackBerry phone, it's actually really tough. It's sort of hefty. It's a little heavy. I've gotten used to it in my pocket, but you'll definitely notice the heft of this thing. It's definitely heavier than a 7 Plus or a big Google Pixel or an, an S8. However, the screen quality is actually really good. I haven't had any scratches. It just feels good in the hand. It feels like you know a high-end premium business phone. It doesn't feel like something that you know, you're going to break. But again, it is pretty hefty, but you could feel the quality in this thing. Another question, does the Nokia phone heat up easily? That's a good question. Maybe you're asking because of the plastic back. I haven't noticed anything like that in terms of heating up. That's probably going to happen more so on a high-end smartphone where you're playing lots of heavy gaming and stuff like that. But on this phone, you're mostly making calls and playing sort of a low-resolution color screen version of Snake. I, I, you know, I can't guarantee it, but I can tell you I have not had any overheating problems uh, with this Nokia phone, but we'll definitely uh, keep an eye out for that. So please, we're talking about the new BlackBerry Key 1 smartphone coming out later this year, the Nokia Gresso phone. This is a very expensive phone, ranges from between $3,500 and $9,000 in terms of the materials, and the new Nokia 3310 with Snake. So please send in your questions about these phones or the iPhone 8, and we'll, we'll get to those over the course of the show. Now, because it is a smartphone, and because this is Gadgets with German, I want to focus a little bit more on the new BlackBerry Key 1 phone. So this is basically the lock screen, as I showed. You can do a fingerprint scanner to uh, unlock it. And there are some cool features in here. So this is a BlackBerry customized version of Android. There is security software in here to encrypt things. And there's actually a cool application in here where it could tell you how secure your phone is. So it runs an analysis here for how secure the phone is, right? And you can see the security I have on this phone right now is fair, right? And you can see this is another feature, and this is our first pro tip. You can actually use this physical keyboard as a trackpad. So it has sensors under here in order to tell you where your tell the phone where your thumb is in order to scroll through it. It works really well on web pages as well. But back to the security thing right here. So it tells you how your phone is doing in terms of security. So you can always monitor that your phone's encrypted, that it has the best features for staying secure, which is really ideal for business users or people who want to make sure they have the most security and they're not going to get hacked. So you can see that there is some green check marks here. That means I have, oh, just opened up Google Assistant. So yes, it has Google Assistant on here. I know we were getting a few questions on that. So the operating system is the stock Android version that comes with the, this phone. So we're secure. The developer options are off, so it's not really optimized for you know, hardcore development. So it's secure. We have a pin code. We have trusted websites on here. It says the OS's integrity has been verified, right? But I don't have a uh, secure startup on, right? That means the phone is encrypted, but the startup, which takes a little bit longer because it's encrypted, I don't have that on right now. I also don't have a Google account on here yet, so it doesn't have factory reset protection. There's no remote management on here, so those are a little two knocks against my security, right? I also have the permissions and apps and such. So overall, it gives me a little bit of a meter here to tell me how secure my phone is. I'm not in the red, so it's not like I'm being reckless with my phone security, but I'm not in the green either. So I don't have the full encryption on, I don't have all those settings on, I don't have remote management on or remote security on in case I lose the phone, but I'm right in the middle, I'm at fair. And this is an actually really cool concept I haven't seen on many phones before, where there's a dedicated app to tell you how secure you are, and I think that's gonna appeal to a lot of executives and business people. More questions coming in here. Does the BlackBerry come with apps? That's a good question, I'll actually show you around. So you click this button in here, 
and you can actually just go through all the apps. So there's a lot of stack, stock Google apps, right? So you have Google Map, Google Drive, all of those things. But you also have some really you know, important BlackBerry apps that really give BlackBerry its name as a company that's done a lot of good software over the years. Not used as much anymore, but I know a lot of people stuck to their BlackBerry for a long time because of BBM, BlackBerry Messenger, and this new hub thing. Just like I think a lot of people stick to the iPhone right now for iMessage, BBM had that power back in the day. You can see other stock apps in here, the camera, contacts, Google Drive, like I said, Gmail, news, weather. So it's basically a really mix, a really deep mix of the core apps, the best of Google, and the best of the BlackBerry security software and their messaging suites built into one phone on this home screen here. Can you show us the charging ports? Sure, that's a good question. So on this BlackBerry here, it's a USB-C charger on the bottom. And I can actually show you here, right? And then you have uh, the, actually the same charging point uh, on both the Nokia and the Gresso phones. And I believe this is um, micro or mini USB. I know it's definitely uh, not the same one because I was charging them up. But none of them are lightning. None of them are proprietary. USB-C is pretty well established as a standard now. The MacBook has it, the MacBook Pro. The iPhone only doesn't. It's really strange that the iPhone is sticking to lightning while the other ones are having USB-C at this point. Hopefully one day Apple gets pretty consistent with it. But for now, I'm sure they have their reasons. And obviously, USB is a world standard at this point. How has BlackBerry Messenger changed? Does BBM still exist? Yes, BBM still exists. And I know it actually came out a couple of years ago on the iPhone and Android. They're really trying to expand it as a service in terms of trying to take the company back from the bottom of where it was. But there's a BBM app on here for sure. I haven't set it up. I don't have a BBM account personally. But there's also the hub feature, which they announced with I believe back in the day when this first announced, it was called BBX, so the BlackBerry 10 operating system. And that sort of makes your emails, your messaging, your contacts, your calendar all into one application, one central hub. A lot of people actually liked it. I thought it was a little similar to the WebOS uh, view where it combined all your social information, your messaging, your emails. And that's a pretty popular feature. And I think business users are going to like having it all in one view uh, here as well. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, more business cases for this, the keyboard. Well, took me some time to get used to this keyboard because I'm coming from an iPhone. I use the Google Pixel, the Samsung phone, usually all the big candy bar, full touchscreen phones. However, I think if you're coming from an older BlackBerry with a physical keyboard, you're going to jump right into this. You're going to feel right at home. And it's basically a huge upgrade for anyone on an older BlackBerry with a physical keyboard. Now, another key thing is the battery life in here. So the battery life uh, works really well. You're going to get a lot of talk time out of this. It's a 4.5 inch screen. So it's about an inch smaller than the screen on the iPhone 7 Plus, even smaller than the screen on the S8 and the iPhone 7. And those are full touchscreen phones. The bigger the screen, the more graphics power is needed to you know, perform on that screen. There's better gaming functionality, graphics cards and such on those phones. So the battery life is a little bit better on here. However, I've run into a few issues where the operating system uh, has been a little bit laggy from time to time, apps taking a little bit longer to load. But overall, the battery life um, is doing okay. Right now it's at 60%. I haven't charged this phone for a few days, so that's pretty good with light, very light usage a couple times a day. I haven't been making many phone calls on this, but the 60% is not too bad after just doing it for a few days with little usage on the desk. Another question coming in here. What other colors do the Nokia and the BlackBerry come in? Very good question. So this Nokia phone, this is the dark blue version right here. I kind of like it. Blue is, as you know from our Microsoft Surface laptop episode, Blue is my favorite color. And imagine having a Surface laptop and one of these matching colors. But this also comes in sort of like an orange, bright red color, uh, a yellow, and a sort of a boring gray color that I wouldn't recommend. Uh, the Gresso phone, this comes in a few other colors. There's a yellow gold version. Colors are different uh, ceramic glass on the back. And this is the main color for the BlackBerry Q1. I don't know what other colors people would want it in, but it has a mix of silver, kind of looks like the same texture as the Google Pixel metal and the iPhone 7 metal, the two different silver models with the white fronts. But this back is a little grippy. I, I haven't seen any colors for this, but maybe they'll come out with maybe a red one or, I don't know, hopefully a blue one in the future. That might be cool. But uh, for business users, I feel like they want something that looks really professional, high grade. And that mix of black and silver probably does it, especially because you have the black keyboard. It molds into the screen. I think it's a, it's a, good, it's a good overall uh, design and concept. It actually looks a little similar. In, in my opinion, to one of those Virtu phones. Obviously, those are the really high end. I believe they're owned by Nokia these days. $7,500, $10,000 phones with leather and diamonds, gold, 
platinum and silver all over the phones. It looks a little like that, but at $550, it doesn't have any of those materials. It just reminds me of that for some reason. Now, we talked about the SIM card situation on the Nokia phone and the Gresho phone. That's really good for business users. And I think the keyboard is going to draw a lot of business users to this BlackBerry as well. So overall, these phones are retro phones in different ways. This one, the Nokia phone, because it's making an encore, it's making its comeback, really good battery life, dual SIM cards for traveling. Likewise with this Gresho phone, dual SIM cards. And this is a really secure phone with great security software and a physical keyboard. If you want a physical keyboard, check out this phone. The Gresso, I think even if you have all the money in the world, you don't really need it. And the Nokia phone could be a really fun gift for someone who's nostalgic. Thank you so much. I'm Mark. This is Gadgets with German. And you can check us out every week at 12.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitter, Facebook, and the Bloomberg Technology website.